better place is there to drink in a little bit of local queer history than a bar? Did you know that West Hollywood is the densest area for gay bars? Did you get, wait, are you calling me dense? Watch it, sister. Honey. There are countless stories that could be told about queers and their bars. And depending on how many cocktails you've had, some of them might even be true. Gosh. We've lost so many of our bars. They're just memories now. The Purple Lion, the Stampede, the Rusty Nail, the Rafters. Gosh. Well, to paraphrase that lost little Kansas girl, my bars come and go so quickly here. Of course, 2020 was a really hard year on many establishments, and especially hard hit were queer bars. But as we know, history has always been tough on LGBTQ people and our watering holes. Police raids and entrapments were regular occurrences. People risked their lives, their reputations, their families, their careers, just to find a queer connection. Back in those shady, raidy days, gay could mean happy, bright, merry. And gay could unfortunately also mean you're busted, you disgusting pervert. 8851 Santa Monica Boulevard is the address for a bar in the 70s and 80s known as the Blue Parrot. Now, here is a fascinating little tidbit of queer bar history. John, take it away! Back in the day, queer bars could not officially exist or they'd get shut down. So, they used code names instead. Often, the first word of the bar's name was a color, and the second word was a bird. This was known as the bird circuit. You could visit any urban area in the country and usually find a blue parrot or a purple parrot or a black swan or use your imagination. Here in LA, we also had the Red Raven uh, down on Melrose near La Brea. Ah! Mickey's, located at 8857 Santa Monica Boulevard, has been around since 1989 as one of the town's more popular dance spots. The hunky go-go dancers might have something to do with their success. But before it was Mickey's, it was what was once called a grungy gay sanctum of the Jurassic era, known as the Four Star Saloon. Okay, it only goes back to 1958, but even that's ancient history for some of us. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? In the memoir, Under the Rainbow by John Carlyle, edited by Chris Freeman, it is mentioned that two Lavender Lads, singer Johnny Ray and actor Clifton Webb, often had to be helped off their bar stools at closing time. Scandalous. He also mentions that the famous composer of Candide and West Side Story, Leonard Bernstein, although married in New York, was quite queer here in West Hollywood. Now that's a West Side Story I'd love to hear. Carlisle even claims that Bernstein came to the Four Star Saloon dressed in evening clothes after a concert and ogled hustlers. Gasp! Speaking of books, from 1990 to 2009, 8853 Santa Monica Boulevard was the address of the pioneering gay bookstore, A Different Light. It first opened in Silver Lake in 1979. Before the era of box chain bookstores and internet ordering, A Different Light was the most influential LGBTQ book source. It was an important cultural hub that hosted numerous community events and readings. But enough about books. Back to continue your education in WeHo's club culture. Pop quiz. Which one of the bars in Boys Town is the oldest continuing gay bar proudly packed with pickups since 1979? Answer, the mother load. But before that, back in the 1960s, it was a restaurant called the Por Favor and a regular for Judy Garland. And as you know, she loved the gays. She even married several. But there were some rather mean customs in place at gay establishments as well, like no touching allowed. Be it as casual as a tap on the shoulder, an affectionate hug, or <gasps> contact dancing. All of these constituted the arrest-worthy offense of lewd 
and contact. And you know who had to be the enforcers of this policy? Bar owners and bartenders themselves. Gay or not, they stood to lose their liquor licenses and their livelihoods if they didn't obey. This created quite a bit of conflict and clashes among the community over the years. Los Angeles had many protests in the late 60s. Encouraged by the Black Power and Chicano movements, thousands of young gays and straights dubbed as the Disturbing the Peace Corps protested along Sunset Strip in 1966. They rallied against imposed curfews to get off the streets by 10 p.m. And as we all know, that's just when the parties get started. In 1967, the LAPD raided bars in the so-called Barbara Streisand Suite, arresting 60 gay men for lewd conduct on the eve of Barbara's TV special. And in Silver Lake, there were the infamous Black Cat Riots of 1967. In the 1970s, a new Los Angeles city attorney, Burt Pines, was among the first who courted the gay vote instead of running away from it. He abolished the practice of unequal enforcement of gay bars. If touching wasn't actually sexual or grossly offensive, either gay or straight, Pines refused to prosecute. However, the homo-hating police found ways around Pines' more lenient policies and began arresting an increased number of gay men for lewd conduct in the parks and streets. As we know far too often, one advancement of equality for LGBTQ folks can bring a counteraction to mess with us in another. Regardless, we persist to resist. Thanks for watching this episode of Stuart Timmons' West Hollywood LGBTQ History Tour. Toto? Toto? The Purple Lion? The Rafters? Where are you? Where did you go? <gasps> Got a rocket in your pocket. Stay cool, boy. No wonder Judy Garland sang in that Cole Porter song, Friendship. If you're ever so happy you land in jail, I'm your bail. Friendship, friendship, I'm a tuna sandwich.